Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everybody. I hope everyone is doing well. Then come back with me again with English one for students of English education. Today we are going to discuss the next our material that is unit five talking about crossing cultures. It quite little bit challenging talking about the cultures, especially for our country Indonesia. We have so many islands. Of course, we have so many cultures that we have, and we have to be proud to be one of the part of this country. Then we have not only be proud, but we have to keep and learn about our cultures. But before we start, as usual, let's begin our program this morning by reading Alpha Teha together. Alpha Teha. Amin. Okay, guys. Um, talking about crossing cultures, it means that crossing is the we learn with the cultures across many countries. So it little bit challenging that I had taught you before. We have to know more knowledge about the cultures. And hopefully that after you graduate from this department that you can take your magister and your doctoral by scholarship in birth. So you get um, uh, the new experience of living in other countries and you can get many also knowledge okay so here the hour expected comes for today then the indicators that you show you can read by you yourself then we go to the next slide with the state your opinion okay as you look at from my slide that will be six, oh sorry, eight countries and include our country, Indonesia. And now in each country, we have different customs. Say for example, like Canada, if you are in Canada, if you are invited for a meal, you should arrive on time, not early or late, but on time. So that is very, very disciplined in that country. So if you invite it by someone in Canada at eight o'clock that you have to be on time at a clock, come and visit their invitations. And now the second country is Indonesia. Indonesia never point to anything with your food because that is very, very impolite. If you want to point to anything, you can use your hand, not by your foot. Okay. Now, next, Thailand. Thailand never touch anyone, especially child, on the head. So very, very dangerous and impolite. But different it with our cultures in Japanese. If there is a new family, they having baby, and many neighbors, their family come to visit to see their baby, and they ask, uh, they give, uh, a good luck, you have a new baby, hopefully that your baby will be sole and soliha. And sometimes they are always touching their cheek, the baby, oh, very much and, and whatever. So, but it's different with the Thailand. You never do touch anyone, especially a child. Then how about Brazil? Brazil, open any gift in front of the person who gave it to you. So if you are uh, get, uh, price or any kind of the gift, then you can open directly uh, in front of the persons that you get from him or her. And how about the South Korea? South Korea always use both hands to pass something to older persons. So if you want to ask permission, say for example, in front of the older persons, you have used your both hands. To pass something okay then how about Egypt don't eat anything with your left hand so you have to eat by your right hand of course this is the same culture with the Muslim as a Muslim we have to use 
the right hand for the right thing. Then how about the friends? Friends, when eating out, keep both hands on or above the table. So this is the manner how we can, we can, we have for a dinner or breakfast that we, when we invite by the people from the friends, we have, we have, especially for eating, we have to keep our hands above on the table. And the last is about Nigeria. When you meet people, don't call them by their first names until they say you can, especially for the first person, uh, the first time we meet someone in Nigeria. So this is impolite for, for them. Okay, now we go to the questions. Does your culture follow any of these customs? So we can compare any kind of the customs here, the state in the box with our country, Indonesia. That is, uh, we have the same or not. So the question is very, uh, the answer is very easy. We just only share and compare and then you can answer by yes or no. And the second is, do any of these customs seem unusual to you? And you can explain. And the last is, what other interesting customs do you know? Probably you ever come to overseas, or maybe you can look at from the Google, from the information, then you can compare the, that the cultures. So it's quite challenging and a little bit uh, interesting when we talk about the cultures. Okay. That is for the first for our uh, snapshot for cultures opinions. Okay, next we go to the next slide. We are going to listen now. We are going to listen about the title. If I move to a foreign country, so hopefully that letter you will be have a chance to go to any a foreign country. Okay, so we are going to listen to the people. They will talk about moving to a foreign country. And would you have any of the same concerns? Okay. Uh, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from the audio speakers. Then we the and then what we, we, we do, we have to read each concern from what not worried at all to five, number five, really worried. What would be your biggest concern. So you think that, you imagine that if you move to that foreign country, what is, you think that you really worried and not worried at all. So number one, you point in that uh, exercise means that you choose to be not worried at all with that culture. But the number five or the last number means that you really worried. Okay, now, we are going to listen about if I move to a foreign country. Here we go. Unit 5, Crossing Cultures. Page 30, Exercise 1, Perspectives. If I move to a foreign country, Part A. Listen to the people talk about moving to a foreign country. Would you have any of the same concerns? One thing I'd really miss is my mom's cooking. I'd be worried about the local food. I might not like it. Getting used to different customs might be difficult at first. My room and home is the thing that I'd miss the most. Not knowing the prices of things is something I'd be concerned about. Moving to a country with a very different climate could be a challenge. I'd be worried about getting sick and not knowing how to find a good doctor. Something I'd be nervous about is communicating in a new language. All right, that's all about the listening about if I move to a foreign country, now your time to make a read for number one until the last number. Okay, now we go to the move slide. That will be word power about culture shock. Of course, if we visit any other country, we will have a culture shock. Why culture shock always comes up in the new people that they visit their country? Because they have different culture with their country. So there is a shock. Then uh, there will be two exercises here. 
you have to do the first is you have to make which one are positive word and which one it belongs to negative word you can start from anxious until worried you can find the definition from the dictionary first if you don't understand the meaning then you can do this exercise by point with positive word or negative word thank you and then for the next exercise b that is group work tell your group about other situations in which you experience the feelings in part a what made you feel the, that way how do you feel about these situations now it's a little bit challenging actually but unfortunately uh, we do for online class and hopefully that you can read by you yourself okay we go to the next slide we come to grammar focus for today our material especially for grammar we are going to learn about non phrases containing relative clauses so what is non phrase actually that have already learned the previous material we have already know about the non phrases so the example we go to the example from the one of the boxes one thing that i would really miss is my mom's cooking so there will be non phrases what where is the non phrases the non phrases is one thing and that is about relative clauses so one thing that i would really miss is my mom's cooking uh, to make sure we will listen from the audio speakers page 31 exercise 3 grammar focus noun phrases containing relative clauses one thing i'd really miss is my mom's cooking one thing that i'd really miss is my mom's cooking something i'd be nervous about is communicating in a new language something that i'd be nervous about is communicating in a new language two people i'd call every week are my parents two people who i'd call every week are my parents two people that i'd call every week are my parents my mom's cooking is one thing i'd really miss my mom's cooking is one thing that i'd really miss communicating in a new language is something i'd be nervous about communicating in a new language is something that i'd be nervous about my parents are two people i'd call every week my parents are two people who i'd call every week okay my parents are two people that i'd call every week okay guys so that's all about uh, listening from the grammar focus actually for number one one thing that i would really miss is my mom mom's cooking and we compare with my mom's cooking is one thing that i would really miss is a little bit different but the same meaning the difference is only the first is one thing is located in the subject but the second one one thing is located in object but the meaning is the same the meaning is the same but only the expression how they express uh, put the non phrase in the subject uh, or maybe they put the non phrase in object then we can put the relative clause by using word that we can spell or we we cannot spell so the meaning is the same but the difference using to make sure that you all understand about this grammar focus about non phrases containing relative clause you may open your book interchange in page 31 in grammar focus and you have to answer the question in part a part b and part c so you can uh, do your exercise in your book start from now okay after you finish doing the exercise we can go to the next slide now still listening especially about the pronunciation 
we are going to listen how we take word stress in sentences. We are going to listen and practice. And we have to notice that the important words in a sentence have more stress. So you will see the point with the color um, purple. So it might, uh, it may be that will be the stress of the words. To make sure we are going to listen together. Here we go. Page 31, exercise four, pronunciation. Word stress in sentences. Part A, listen and practice. Notice that the important words in a sentence have more stress. Argentina is a country that I'd like to live in. Speaking a new language is something I'd be anxious about. Trying new foods is something I'd be curious about. Okay, so that's all. So this is true. The color purple, that is the word stress. So, so for example, Argentina is a country that I would like to live in. Speaking a new language is something I would be anxious about. Trying new foods is something I would be curious about. So there is a stress that which one is the word that we put more uh, heavy uh, sounds in each word. Then we go to the exercise by B with the pronunciation. Mark the stress in the sentences you wrote in exercise three, part A. Then practice the sentences, pay attention to word stress. You can go to the exercise number three, the previous. Okay. Now we go to the last that is speaking time. We are our big topic is talking about going abroad, and we have already provide uh, some questions here. Then each students I will divide into group. Then as usual, you can do your speaking with your partner. What we what will you do? So you have to think of two more questions to add to the list. So you can put two more questions or more than two questions. Then you take turn asking with your partner and your partner will answer. So that is like a role play with your friends. So for example, what country would you like to live in? So you have to choose one country uh, beside Indonesia, so for example, uh, in the future, I want to live or I want to continue my study in Australia. And why you choose Australia to be part of your country you want to live in the future? Then you ha can have a little bit communications. Then you can upload your assignment into our e-learning. Then also you can see the examples in the in under of the text like what country would you like to live in the country i would most like to live in is italy why is that well i have always wanted to study art okay so that is the reason why this person want to live in italy so it will be quite challenging and i will see and visit our e-learning to listen and hear your speaking with your partner. For the partner, I will tell from our WhatsApp group. So I think that's all for our meeting, Unit 5, talking about crossing cultures. And it will be continued with the same material in Unit 5 with Ibu Duro for tomorrow class. If you found many mistake, please forgive me. So let's close our program this morning by reading Hamdallah together. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbul Alamin. And doa kafir majlis. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashadu ala ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu laik. Have a nice day. And last I say, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you.